Hey, what's up guys? John here. We are seeing the transformation of the domestic airline business and it's happening right now before our eyes. We had over 2,000 flights canceled this weekend alone with Southwest Airlines. It's unbelievable. There's rumors that this cancellation is due to Biden's mandate. But when we look across the board, we're seeing a lot of people, police officers, government officials, a lot of big, big industries walking off the job. The question I ask myself is if this is right and this does eventually happen, how can all the big airlines stay in business? Think about it. If you have half the travelers and you have the same amount of debt for each airline, they have less pilots, less stewardess. There's no way that they can all stay in business. So what ultimately I think is going to happen is we're going to see it go from 10 or 12 or 15 big major carriers to maybe two or three big airlines that basically run all of America. I ask myself the big question, will these airlines get bailed out just like some of the big financial institutions did in 2008? Because a lot of what's happening right now is due to these mandates, allegedly. Now, if this does happen, what will this look like for all of us with domestic travel? How could we get around? How expensive will airfare be if prices are set only by two or three different carriers? That's the big question, and in this video, you're gonna find out the answer. Drop your comments below, smash that like button when you hit the like button. YouTube is gonna share this content to educate more people about what's really going on. So please smash that like button, let's begin. We are about to witness police departments, fire departments, infrastructures in major cities all across the country fall at levels that we've never seen. Staffing shortages, when there's no accountability inside of a city, if the odds of getting busted for a crime get greatly reduced, what's ultimately gonna happen? Crimes are gonna skyrocket. The same thing that's happening with these major police departments all over the country is now happening, it seems, with these airlines. There's some theories saying that it's all due to Biden's new mandate, other theories saying something else. But this is what the New York Post is saying, very, very suspicious. Southwest Airlines cancels hundreds more flights amid the new mandate. Total of 2,000 flights. More than 300 other Southwest flights were facing delays, the site data showed. But we scroll down here, the mass cancellations and delays on the, day, on the busy Columbus Day weekend come after the airline announced last week that it would require all employees to get the new, as called for by Biden earlier this year. Employees must get it by December 8th or face termination. The Dallas, Texas-based airline is approximately 56,000 employees. So 50% of that, if they walked off the job, that airline would crumble. There's no way it would be able to stay in business. And what we see here, how many airlines, how many employees, Just American Airlines, 102,000 employees. How many airlines, look, 133,000 employees is what they're quoting. If you have half of these employees walking off the job, these airlines, it's over. The weekend challenges were not a result of employee demonstrations, the spokesperson said in an email statement, adding the weather issues in Florida led to displaced crews. Very interesting timing. But the timing of the cancellation sparked speculation by travel industry insiders and politicians that the mandate is the cause of the issue. That's the big question. What are the odds? It's just a real question. What are the odds that you would have 2,000 flights canceled right at the time of us stepping into Biden's new deadline? This is a really, really big problem that we all have to ask ourselves. We look at the infrastructure, the hospitals across the country, all of these industries are about to collapse. That's what it looks like to me. What I'm looking at, you know, Rolling Stone, will a city mandate cause thousands of cops to walk off the job? 40% have still not complied. October 20th deadline, you got a week and a half, week and a half. They could lose 40% of the police department in LA. If you look at Seattle, Seattle Police Department prepares to fire 40% the same ratio in Seattle and LA if they don't comply. By October 18th, they have about you know a week, despite already suffering staffing lows not seen since the 1980s. This, this is uh, unbelievable. I personally think that a lot of people 
that have the ability, when they start to see their cities falling and unsafe, where they can't, a single mom can't walk out on the street with her kid in a stroller, she's going to ask herself, is this the best place for me to walk my kid? Is this the best place for me to live? A lot of people are probably going to get uprooted and move somewhere that's a bit safer. Because these cities, we look at New York right now, even New York, crime is through the roof. And it's likely only going to get worse when there's no accountability in the streets. I'm thinking where I think this is ultimately going is I think that they're prepared for all the people that are going to walk off the job across all these industries. They're prepared for it. This really interesting article came out from The Guardian saying stealing our jobs or solving labor shortages. This just came out. From fast food to farming, the pandemic has accelerated the rise and the worker robots. This in turn will put more jobs at risk, makes the need to reframe society even more urgent. As the pandemic enveloped the world last year, business increasingly turned to automation in order to address rapidly changing conditions. Floor cleaning and microbe zapping, disinfecting robots were introduced in hospitals, supermarkets, and other environments. Some enterprises found that given the emphasis of hygiene and social distancing, robotic operations offered a marketing advantage. The American fast food chain White Castle began using hamburger cooking robots in an effort to create an avenue for reduced human contact and food during the cooking process. There can be no doubt that the pandemic and the associated worker shortage are accelerating the drive through deploying artificial intelligence, robotics, and other forms of automation. In the UK, the trend is being further amplified by Brexit's impact on the workforce becoming evident. However, the reality is that most of these technologies are unlikely to arrive in time to offer a solution to the, immediately challenge, to the immediate challenges faced by the employers. But this also gives the innovators of these companies a huge advantage because what's ultimately going to happen is all these companies that we're used to doing business with that don't have the deep pockets like McDonald's, they're simply going to fall. And when everything falls, what's ultimately going to happen these big investors, Amazon, all these big conglomerates are going to say, hey, now we have the technology, we have the robotics, we have the infrastructure. We can simply just build out all these new companies. We have no competition. We can charge whatever we want. We can essentially do whatever we want because the free market died. Some of the most critical work, worker shortages are in the UK transportation logistics. By one estimate, the country is currently short of at least 100,000 truck drivers. Over the course of a decade or more, however, the, art, the overall impact of artificial intelligence and robotics on the job market is likely to be significant. In some specific areas, the technology may lead to dramatic change within the next few years. And many workers will soon confront the reality that the encroachment of automation technology will not be limited to the often low paying and less desirable occupations where worker shortage are currently concentrated. Indeed, many of the jobs that employers are struggling to fill may prove to be highly resistant to automation. At the same time, better paying positions that workers definitely want to retain will be squarely in the sights of AI and robotics to continue the relentless advance. So there's some real big questions we all have to ask ourselves. If this mandate is coming into play in the next week, how is this going to impact these airlines? And what are we going to see in terms of our mobility, our flexibility to travel? When I say our, I mean half the country. When half the country can't get up and go and travel because everybody is going to be fighting to get on these airlines, there's not going to be that many seats. Prices are going to go sky high. Prices are going to get out of control. The question I ask myself is what does the future of airlines look like in the next six months, 12 months? These companies are all supported by extreme levels of debt. And if they can't make good on their debt obligations, they're either going to have to get a big bailout, they're going to have to sell to a competitor, or they're just going to have to close up their shop. What do you think about all this? Do you think that this is just the beginning of the big, big problems ahead? Drop your comments below, smash that like button, subscribe here, consider subscribing to my personal channel, my second channel. I'm going to leave the links pinned down below in the top comment. See you guys in the next video. YouTube Success Blueprint. To learn more about growing your YouTube channel and creating passive 
income as a YouTuber, register for my YouTube success blueprint by clicking the link in the description below this video.